For some people, big is truly beautiful. Give me a bit of cuddle. And they couldn't imagine life without the pitter-patter of gigantic paws. I was thinking we'd rather have the dogs than grandchildren, but... <laughs> In this programme, we'll discover what it's like to share your life. She could take me down, no problem. And home. Oh, no! With some of the biggest pets on the planet. Oh, she's gone. So join us as we meet all creatures great and tall. Wow, look at the size of him. The Kelly family from Nottingham became owners of one of Britain's biggest pets almost by accident. Picking up their puppy for the first time, they had no idea he would go from this to this. Meet the mighty Finn. Hey. A four-year-old Irish wolfhound. He dwarfs every dog he's ever met. Yeah. And makes the family sitting room look as if everything's in miniature. Come on, sit on mum's knee. Good boy. You, you can't move very much, and after a while your legs go a bit numb, but uh, we've had him since he was around nine weeks old, and uh, he just seemed to grow and grow and grow, which to us didn't seem unusual. It was only when Finn was nearly two years old that they realised that he was different from other wolfhounds. We took him to see the breeder. We, we go up to see her quite regular and we opened the car door and he jumped out and she said, Oh, crikey, he's a big boy. So we decided to try and meet some other wolfhound owners and went to a wolfhound fun show. And it was there that we realised that he was bigger than every dog that was there, actually. Seeing Finn against other dogs, you get a sense of his size and scale. He dwarfs a Jack Russell, towers over a Labrador, and measured against a miniature horse, the mighty Finn still reigns supreme. People do stop and stare. He's a crowd stopper. People want photographs. Um, it's surprising how many people you would never talk to come and talk to you to, just because yeah. of Finn. Come on, mate. Finn. Whoop. Spin, 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 spin. You ready? Two, three. Weighing roughly 90 kilos, Finn has a varied diet of turkey, tripe and ox heart. Hey, rolling, boy. Hey, rolling. Hey, rolling. Come on. And now, after three full years of growing, Carol and Danny have started to ask themselves if he could be a contender for the world's tallest dog. It would be lovely to think that he was the biggest dog in the world. We'll be able to go on the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> it would be nice to bring something like that home. Yet it's going to be a tough challenge. Over in America, Giant George holds the current title. And he's not only the tallest dog in the world, but the tallest dog in history. Standing at nearly 110 centimetres from paw to shoulder, Giant George is the same height as two average golden retrievers and the same weight as 35 Yorkshire Terriers. All in all, the mighty Finn certainly has a lot to measure up to. Here we go. Before finding out if he can bring the record for the tallest dog back to Britain, we're off to meet the biggest pet on the planet. Welcome to Quinlan, Texas, home to ex-rodeo star Ronald, his wife Sharon, and what can only be described as Ronald's pride and joy. Wild Thing's not just a pet, he's a member of the family. I spend a lot more time with the Wild Thing than I do my wife or my kids or any human. But strangely enough, Ronald's wife doesn't quite share his passion. I am a little bit scared because I know the pain and um, I've heard the horror stories. Which makes this all the more incredible. Coming in. Hello, wild thing. Hi, baby boy. But for Ronald's wife, cowering behind the sofa, it doesn't look as if Wild Thing's the perfect house pet. Don't get back here, don't get back here, do not get back here. Don't get back here. Thank you. Hello, baby boy. Well, bye. 
Wild Thing is an American bison, and standing six feet tall and weighing over a ton in weight, he's a formidable animal. Running at speeds of 40 miles per hour and with skulls designed as battering rams, every year they kill more people in Yellowstone National Park than grizzly bears. If he was a normal bison, I would have already been killed. But having raised Wild Thing from a calf, Ronald believes he's developed a unique bond with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's my best buddy. So, when a cowboy married an Indian, who better to ask to be the best man? But he knows that no matter what he does, Wild Thing will never be tame. If you get a pet buffalo, you're going to get hurt. It's, there's no way around it. They're, they're an attack animal. They, they like attacking. Wild Thing's going to be on one side. I prefer my family or my friends be on the other side. I can't really get close to him without a fence. This is too dangerous. And I'm afraid that I'd get hurt. Despite the obvious hazards of letting a wild animal into your home, Ronald doesn't just have one, but two pet bison. And unlike Wild Thing, Bullet's not nearly so careful. Oh, Bullet, I see you. Don't move the couch. Stop it! No! What's she doing? She was horning the couch, and I don't want her ripping a hole in it if I can help it. Plus, too, they need to know that they're not allowed to tear up the furniture. Ha -ha! I told you no. Ha! Don't think about it. It's a playful thing. It's nothing mean. It's just nosiness. No, don't tear my skill up. No. The last time she was in the house, she tore up that $100 flower arrangement. Letting an animal the size of a small family car wander around your house, hey! things are bound to get damaged. No, no. You're a problem child. Yet, in Ronald's eyes, his bison can do no wrong. They never used the bathroom in the house or pooped in the house at all. It's amazing because I did not know how to train them to do that. What are you doing, bullet? Uh -oh. oh, no! Well, Wild Thing never done that. You've been a bad girl. Oh. She finally weaseled in my house. Yeah, Wild Thing never done anything. Oh, my Lord. Get that cleaned up. And... That's such a bad girl. There's no doubt that having two bison as house pets has its challenges, so you've got to ask him why he does it. If it's not dangerous, it don't excite a cowboy. If it's ordinary, I'm bored. Coming up, we'll find out if the mighty Finn can make his mark on history. We've got a height for Finn now. We'll be following the path to bunny rabbit stardom. He looks like a bear. He's huge. And one of Britain's biggest snakes makes a dash for freedom. Get out of my Get out of my way. Over in Nottingham, the mighty Finn is on a date with destiny. I think we're going to be a big lad today and get your weight and measure and see if you can beat that George. Hey, eh? Go on then, here we go. If he can beat giant George's record, he'll become not only the tallest dog in the world, but the tallest dog in history. I'm excited about Finn being measured. I think he's on for a good, good chance to beat it. So we'll go and have a look, see what happens. And we never know, he could bring that record back home with him. Finn's come to meet specialist vet Mike Adams. Good boy. Okay. Where he'll be officially measured to see if he can set a new world record. Hello there. Hello. This is Finn. This is Finn. Hi, Finn. Hello. Hey. So, we think Finn might be the biggest dog in the world. Well, we'll go for it. We'll have a try. <laughs> OK, bring him in. Bring him in. Come on, then. Good boy. Now, I'm afraid our normal measuring doesn't work for dogs of his size, so we've actually got a horse measuring stick, 
and we're going to measure in with that, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I thought that would be the way you'd have to do it. Okay, then. What we just need to do is get him standing still, and then we're going to measure him from his paws to his shoulder. Okay. The official way of measuring dogs is not to the top of their heads or ears, but the top of their shoulders. Okay. We've got him level. That's lovely. It took giant George three attempts before he was officially crowned the world's tallest dog. So, will Finn be able to prove himself on his very first outing? So, the largest dog in the world um, is 43 inches tall. We've got a height for Finn now, and he's not 43 inches tall. He's 38 inches tall. Oh, I was a bit disappointed. We were only 38. Only 38, I'm afraid. But as far as we're aware, that does make him the tallest dog in the UK. So, he's done pretty well for himself. Thank you. Good boy. Although not having done quite enough to make it into the record books, there's no doubting that he is still a truly giant pet. It's a bit disappointing that he's not beaten, but if we say you're UK older, that would be lovely. He looks like a bear. Pauline Grant runs Sussex Horse Rescue, home to over 100 horses, goats, pigs and other exotic animals. <laughs> Yet it's her monster pet, Ralph, who's become the real star of the show. Oh, it's terribly heavy. Ralph isn't just kept cooped up in a rabbit hutch. Instead, he has the full run of Pauline's house. Good boy. What have you done? What have you done? You've got all caught up in my lead, haven't you? You get all caught up in my lead, did you? Now that's your droppings on my desk. Doing your droppings on my desk. He races up and down the stairs, he jumps on the desk. And of course he does chew furniture. We don't mind so much him chewing the furniture, but he does go for the electric wires. But as one of my sons is an electrician, he's earthed it so that it doesn't kill the rabbit. It just puts all our electric off. You're thinking of jumping down, aren't you? Going. Gone. Ralph's a breed of rabbit known as a continental giant, and he certainly lives up to his name. He dwarfs any regular rabbits, and that's hardly a surprise. Weighing nearly 20 kilograms, he's almost eight times heavier than your average rabbit. Or, to put it another way, he's the same weight as most five-year-olds. Pauline bought Ralph when she was looking for a couple of rabbits for her grandchildren, and she thought she'd found a bargain. I saw an advert, buy one, get one free, and the two girls, Maddie and Jess, were absolutely thrilled. But Ralph wasn't quite the cute little rabbit that she'd had in mind. After we'd had him about a week, we then received quite a bit of information and it said that Ralph was the son of the biggest rabbit in the world. Well, I hadn't realised that. Ralph's mother, Amy, was almost four foot in length and weighed a massive 22 kilograms. He ate loads compared to the other rabbit. He was massive. Come on. Too big for her grandchildren, Pauline adopted him herself. But Ralph comes with his own special dietary requirements. I'm just cutting up Ralph's breakfast now. Then he likes different sorts of cabbage. And then he has two water biscuits. They're his favourite. He has some of these baby sweet corn. And then he has a Weetabix. Mustn't forget his watercress. He does like his watercress. This is what the vet tells me he must have. This is what he's supposed to have. 
Ralph's appetite is so enormous that he eats in a day what most rabbits eat in a week. The vet did say he should only have this and hay. But, I mean, would you like to live on coffee and toast all day? Come on, Ralph. Ralph's yearly food bill comes in at a whopping £1,000. But being the star of the horse sanctuary, he definitely does his bit to earn his keep. Oh, look at you. Are you coming to see our big rabbit? That's good of you. Very kind of you. He likes that. Wow. He's so soft. Look at the size of his feet. Huge, aren't they? Yeah. How'd you do? I don't think he looks like a rabbit. He's huge. He weighs more than she does. <laughs> now a little bit famous, people travel just to get a glimpse of Ralph the Giant Rabbit. I think he's exhausted now, look. It's hard work being a celebrity, you know. Meet Nikki from Newcastle. She's a reptile fanatic. If I had to choose between these and a million quid, I would definitely turn the million pound down. I don't know what I would do without me reptiles. By her last count, she has over 88 snakes, lizards and spiders. These are me corn snakes. I've had them since I was seven years old. Uh, the first snakes I've ever got. They're about 19 years old and they're still alive and kicking. I got this one first. Um, within a few months, I got him, and since then, I started begging my mum and dad if I could get any more, and this is what we've ended up with. <laughs> Working in a reptile shop and looking after her own ever-expanding collection, she spends her life and all of her money on her pets. I can't afford any dresses or jewellery or anything. I'd rather buy more reptiles. I think they were a lot more entertaining than a new pair of shoes. <laughs> when she found out somebody was looking to rehome one of Britain's biggest snakes, she jumped at the chance. So this is uh, my lap, and I'm gonna make a go. Nah. What's up at the moment, Nikki? She's hissing, um, showing signs that she wants to strike at us. Um, she's not impressed. There's a hiss. <laughs> That's a leave me alone hiss. <laughs> if she's in a good mood, she'll be your best friend. But if she's in a bad mood, she can be your worst enemy. She could take me down, no problem. This is not a snake to mess with. Pet pythons smaller than Myla have been known to suffocate and eat their owners. So having had her for less than two months, Nikki wants to attempt to get her checked by a local vet. Do you think you'll be able to get her out? Uh, it's going to take a hard, it's going to take a while to get her out. Um, I just don't want her striking out at people, so we have to be really careful. Calm down, baby girl. So if she's let us go in, which is the main thing, it's just getting her out now. To help lend a hand, she's enlisted the help of Mum Lorraine and boyfriend Gary. There she is. She is strong. Right in the corner. Just pull him back. Come on, Layla. Right, right, right. It's just a big, hefty animal. I don't want to stress her out too much, but I'm having to do as much as I can to get her out. She's very heavy. <laughs> Approximately 16 feet long, Myla became too big and too dangerous for her previous owner. And considering Burmese pythons are capable of swallowing crocodiles, they're certainly no casual pet. With Nikki still living with her mum and dad, they were understandably concerned when she brought Myla back to their house. Oh, it was very, very scary at first. Um... I don't mind any kind of animals, snakes or anything, but when I saw the size of Myla, I was very, very shocked. When she told me she was getting Myla, this big snake, I disagreed with it and told her I didn't want her to bring it in the house. 
Despite their misgivings, Myla's now living in their kitchen, and Nikki couldn't be happier. It's assumed she's 16 foot, and the sheer thought and excitement to think, oh, I've got a 16 foot snake in the house, it's not as exciting when you say, I've only got a 13 foot snake in the house, you know? The challenge for Nikki now is to get her out of her vivarium so she can be weighed and measured at the vets. Stop being naughty! <laughs> Don't want to go behind the piano. Perfect. <laughs> She's in. Oh, it's like trying to get a camel out of a sand pit. It's just heavy work. With Myla finally settled into her travel box, they head off to the vets. But Nikki's feeling extremely anxious. When she gets there to the vet, she's going to be on her best behaviour. Um, I hope she's not going to put up any fights or anything. I thought she was out back there before. <laughs> Would have been quite funny if it was, especially driving behind and you can just see a big snake popping its head up. <laughs> Coming up, we find out what happens when Myla strikes back. Colors. We meet two of Britain's big cat fanatics. He's off. <laughs> and to top it all, we head off to America to catch up with a super-sized hamster who's the same size as a pig. In Newcastle, Nikki's on her way to her local vets to get one of Britain's biggest snakes weighed and measured. On hand to help is local vet Alison Moore. Goodness. Nikki, 64.25 kilos. <laughs> oh, God. Quite impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it is. We thought she was about 40 kilo or something. With Myla being heavier than her owner, Nikki, Alison's now got the unenviable task of examining a very temperamental snake. Now, are we going to be able to get a measurement? That would be the next step. I'll stand here just in case. I will get some string. As soon as Myla starts hissing, Nikki knows it's bad news, and it's a sign she could strike at any moment. And I think it would be a good idea if everyone just moves for now. Shh, shh, shh. All right. Yeah, that's great. Just keep her covered. Oh, <sighs> she's got us. She's bitten Nikki's wrist, and as you can see, she was just inches away from biting her face. Within seconds, the bite starts to swell up, and although Myla's not a venomous snake, she'll need to get pretty immediate medical attention. I feel like crying because she's such a beautiful animal. This isn't going to stop us from handling her or anything like that. And straight away, Nikki goes back into the room. Careful, Nikki. Where is she? She's under there. She's right next to your head. People. My life, you're being naughty. With a giant snake on the loose, they've given up on trying to get her measured. Let her, just let her, get out of our way. Get out of our way. Just make sure the doors are shut. Otherwise, she'll be down the stairs. The challenge now is to try and get her safely back in her duvet. Can you get a head there? Right, duvet cover. She's got one of us. Myla's now trying to attack Nikki by wrapping herself around her leg. That's it, well done. Yeah. I think that was uh, her retreating there. <laughs> I don't really want that back in the house. I don't what we've just experienced there. It's it's not good. I just don't think I could go there going for her. It's very, very scary. Very scary. Sorry. See a lot of people at this rate would say get rid of her. You just have, I'm just gonna have to think about it seriously. She's done what she's done. I haven't liked it. It's upsetting. 
very upsetting. It's one of those she... situations where you think, well, what's best for us? What's best for her? It's not best for me. No. It's not best for me, that name. The events of the day have led Nikki's mum to seriously rethink her position. And after a night's sleep, she's made her decision. After yesterday, my thoughts were to have Nyla put to sleep. But after careful consideration, obviously, she was frightened. So I know if dogs bait and they get a second chance. Nyla probably deserves a second chance. And if I can find somebody that way she can go, then that would be what option. For the sake of me mum and dad, if they want her to go, then I will try and find somewhere where she's going to be happy and I'm satisfied that she's going to get the care and attention that she deserves. Nikki's now in the process of trying to find a new home for Myla. In Preston, Lancashire, this unassuming suburban house is home to Ray and Sandra and some of the world's biggest cats. You've always wanted I've, I've the, always biggest wanted cat. the biggest that Ray one was, could possibly is the get. Only one. Yeah. Uh, and the main yeah. coon does it for us, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Biscuit! Come on, biscuit! <laughs> Mammoth main coons originate in the United States, and Ray and Sandra now have 15. A few of them we've trained to go on a harness and lead, just like a dog. Be quite alert, because you've got 18, 20 pounds on the end of nothing more than the fishing line. Come on. But there's one real showstopper who's bigger than all the rest. Kisario Cisco Kid. Everybody wants to stop and photograph him. And they always say, wow, look at the size of him. He is big. Mm. And we both look at each other and think, that's our baby. <laughs> Yet at over a metre in length, he's certainly no baby. And in fact, he's the same weight as three newborns. Oh, you big boy. No, that's not your garden. We can't go in there. He's off. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you don't seem to have a lot of control over him, Ray. No, he's controlling me, largely. I have to keep an eye on him. If I see him not in the house, I know he's outside walking the cats. I think he's deaf, but uh, that's him, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Ray and Sandra's real passion is showing their supersized cat. My colleagues at work, uh, well, they know when there's a show coming because uh, I'm having Thursday off because they know that as bath day. <laughs> Getting Cisco ready for a show is a gruelling three-hour routine. I guess they think I'm uh, crazy. crazy. <laughs> Um, and I am, I guess. Ah! Gee, God! Oh, for something. Ah! It's, it's almost like having a workout, and you can actually feel the sweat running down your back sometimes. This week is one of the most important events in the cat calendar, the Midlands County Cat Show. OK. Yeah. OK, baby. Oh. Come on, big boy. There we go. Setting off at 6am and driving for two hours, they arrive with butterflies in their stomach. Always a little apprehensive. Um, what we want to really do is get the cat settled. And here's the big boy himself, Casaro Cisco Kid. Having proved himself amongst his breed, Cisco will now be competing against every other kind of cat for the chance to be crowned an Olympian show cat. Assessing the cats will be expert judge John Hansom. This is the highest class we have, and the level of competition at this class is, is pretty fierce now because you're covering all breeds, we don't have higher than this. No. The first cat to be inspected is Cisco Kid. Hell of a size. He's a massive boy, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a very handsome cat, he really is. He's beautifully prepared. The, the only minor thing I'd like is a little bit more fullness to his tail to give it a bit more impact, if you like, yeah. He's very handsome, actually. I must over there. Oh, I can't wait for the results. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well. my God. This is a nail-biting part. <laughs> like most hobbies, it can overtake things a bit. And people do tend to lose perspective sometimes. Gee, my hands are shaking. Look at that. So far, though, it's looking good for Cisco. At the moment, it's still the other cat who's in the lead. But there's one more cat left to judge. 
very nice as well, actually. Yes. Mm. A bit of a sweetie as well. Mm. It's going to be him or the main crew. With Judge John Hansom about to make his decision, will it be a moment of delight or disappointment for Ray and Sandra? Right now, all of their hopes are hanging on what's been written on a tiny bit of paper. What did he get? Reserve. Reserve. Yeah, it's our day for reserves today. Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's unpleased. It's second place for Cisco. And despite the obvious disappointment, Ray and Sandra put on a brave face. At least we've got something, so it's nothing to be uh, ashamed of. I'm proud. I'm pleased with the result. It's still worth the trip. Um, yes, it was still worth the trip. Yeah. Because of, now we, we can look forward for the next show. When Melanie from Buddha, Texas, decided to adopt a pet, surprisingly, she opted for the world's biggest rodent. Circle. Circle. Good boy. Good boy. That's my cute little capybara. Native to South America, capybaras are a kind of supersized hamster. And being semi-aquatic, Melanie's capybara loves nothing more than diving into her pool. No matter what the temperature. When my kids were young, they always wanted a swimming pool. And we never got them one. But we'd only had the capybara a couple months, and we got a swimming pool. Wait, stand all the way. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. Gary started life as just a tiny ball of fur, no bigger than a guinea pig. But now weighing 50 kilograms, he's closer in size to a real pig. And has completely taken over Melanie's life. They love to roll in the mud. And sometimes I come home and the house is just completely covered with mud. And not just the floors, but the furniture, the walls. And the really sad thing is I don't even get mad about it. Well, I think it's cute. <laughs> it's lucky that Melanie's so taken with Gary, because when it comes to their house, he has access all areas. He has the full run of the house, and he can sleep with us in the bed whenever he wants to. He likes to watch TV at night with us. You. And I like to sit with him on the couch, too, and read. That's one of our favorite times. And he's also had a pretty big impact on her bank balance. Gary, come on. I guess he costs between 80 to $200 worth of food a week, which is at least twice what it costs to feed me. It's really quite an embarrassing amount. So at roughly 130 pounds a week, Melanie's looking at a yearly bill in excess of 6,000 pounds. And look at him. That face is worth every penny. Well, Melanie couldn't be prouder of Gary. And being the custodian of the world's largest rodent, she loves to show him off. You know how this works. There you go. Today, he's getting ready for his first ever charity fundraiser. This noise is a... I'm nervous noise. This noise, is, he's just a little stressed out. He's not super stressed out, but it's definitely not a happy sound. Gary's the planned star of the show, and employees at a local company have all been sponsoring each other to kiss the critter. Whoever raises the most money gets the dubious reward of kissing Gary. We're hoping that he's going to be good about being kissed and whatnot, but if he's not, we have a backup. We also brought my pet rat, Bakersfield. It's way better to kiss a capybara. They're both rodents, at least. So, with everything riding on Gary, it's his big moment. Come on, monster. Good boy. Welcome to the 2012 Kiss the Critter event, hosted by Gary and Melanie here. <laughs> and as the results are announced... The winner's obviously keen not to disappoint any of his fans. And in he goes. Straight for the lips.
I think the event went spectacularly. It went much better than I anticipated. He actually kissed him on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we'll be finding out if there's such a thing as the perfect family-friendly giant rat. <laughs> and we'll be meeting the people breeding tomorrow's record breakers. <laughs> In Trowbridge, Wiltshire, there's one lady who's so passionate about her giant pets that she started to breed them. To me, my closest bonds have been with my rats. Go on, then. You can have your food. I love them as much as I love my children. Leslie's speciality is Gambian pouched rats. And of course, they're the biggest breed of rats in the world. This is Odo. He's five this year, and he's my biggest boy. When I got him, he wasn't tame. It took me a good two years before I was able to tame him enough that I could handle him without getting bitten. But he's, he's a pussycat nowadays. At two foot long, he's three times bigger than your average rat, and the same weight as 70 house mice. And every day, Leslie likes to take her giant rat out for a walk. Come on. No, you can't go that way. Which way do you want to go? The thing that I find amazing is, is just how giving they are and how loving they can be. Come on for such a, an animal that's still not really domesticated. They show just how trusting they can be. And... Oh, hi, Polly's. Come here. This way. Because he's stressed and he's not happy. Come here, because I don't want to get bit. All right, come here. Oh. Shh, shh, shh. Ah! <laughs> right, off, 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 off. What's he done, Leslie? He's just given me a really, really nice bite. Right, can I, can I take him in? Can we yeah. stop with him, please? Yeah. Because he is not good. Ow. I haven't been bit by him for four years. Right, let's get him in. I haven't been bit by him for a very long time. Kids, can you all please get back? But with razor-sharp teeth capable of chewing through metal... Stand back, please. It's not such a little scratch. Alright, calm down, darling. He's just got agitated. Everything going on, he's not sure of it. He's just got a little bit out of his depth. And he's got me in three different places. I have a habit of getting a little bit overconfident with him and probably shouldn't do. Having adopted Odo, he's never going to be as tame as Leslie would like. So, is there such a thing as the perfect family-friendly giant rat? Come see, Mummy. This is Tora. And Tora, I bred myself. Her mum and dad are Odo and Belle. And she is one of the sweetest things I've ever known. Having handled her since she was a baby... Holy my nose! <laughs> Leslie's confident that she's safe with anyone. Even her rather enthusiastic two-year-old, Tabitha. Hi, Elder. What do you call her? Tabitha. Oh. Tabitha. <laughs> Your face. Being immensely proud of Tora, she's become her rat ambassador. And today, she's taking her to the local primary school on a Hearts and Minds campaign. Right. Kids, I think, are, are always better to uh, introduce them to, because they don't have that connected fear with rats um, that the adults do. So I find kids are a lot more accepting of them. But it's still a nervous moment for Leslie, as this will be Tora's first ever public outing. Massive. Massive. Okay, good afternoon, boys and girls. I have come here today to talk to you about some very special rats that I keep. This is Tora. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Touch the tail. You know what a tail feels like? Get very gentle. What sound do you think they all make? Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gone. Who'd want to get a pet rat now? Bye. <laughs> that was brilliant. Really good atmosphere. The kids were, were brilliant to be able to speak to. They seemed to really enjoy themselves. That's the biggest rat i ever seen. I really want to have a rat. Tora, for a first out, it was on the best behaviour, so I couldn't have been prouder of her. Oi! 
Over in Limerick, Scotland, two people who've devoted their lives to breeding a pack of the world's biggest dogs are Bill and Fran. I was thinking we'd rather have the dogs than grandchildren, but <laughs> uh, I better not say that. Wolfhound mad. Bill and Fran now have eight giant dogs and eleven puppies. On your bed. The pride of their pack is a seven foot tall Irish wolfhound called Jack. <laughs> Yes, he does. He's a lovely boy. He loves everybody and he tells everybody, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Come here. Come get dried. Oh, you're beautiful. Mm. Jack's size and fame have made him very popular among the ladies, and he has puppies in Russia, Germany, and America. You're a big boy. His latest litter, however, is much closer to home. For Bill and Fran, selling their wolfhounds is a big responsibility. And it doesn't matter who you are, they don't make any exceptions. We once had somebody wanting one of our pups, and Fran asked, do you work? And she says, well, yes, we both work. And I says, well, I'm sorry. I says, you can't have a puppy. And she says, oh, no, I work from home. And I says, oh, really, what do you do? And she says, I'm a writer. And I says, oh, what do you write? And she said, the Harry Potter books. And I went... Ah, no, I know who you are. Come on. Today, Bill and Fran have got a couple of people coming all the way from Sweden who are interested in getting one of Jack's puppies. And this is all part of their vetting process. If we don't like them and we don't feel that they're the right for the pups and they don't mix with the big dogs, that's the proof, not the pups, they don't get a puppy. I mean, it doesn't matter how far you've travelled. You know, if you're not suitable, then you don't get a puppy. So, for the Swedes Maria and Inga, it's critical that they make a good first impression. Uh, I have been searching for around two years to find the right puppy and the breeder. And uh, now I finally found the right puppy. But the real challenge is yet to come. Hey girls, have you met um, the big dogs yet? No. Come on dogs, out you come. Just close the door and go. Meeting Bill and Fran's giant dogs will be the real test of whether they're deemed suitable to own a wolfhound. This is Indy. He's my old boy. Some people come in here, they're spotlessly clean, spotlessly dressed. Um, and you can see them pulling dog hairs off themselves, you know. You wouldn't get a pup from me. <laughs> what do you think of him, Maria? I love them. Really nice. Jack, leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> They're cuddling the wolfhounds, the wolfhounds are kissing them, and there's none of this, oh, don't do that, get off me. You can see straight away that they are wolfhound people. <laughs> They're happy with us, we are more than happy with them, but they will be taking a puppy back. So Maria's got her wolfhound, and you never know, one day it could become a record breaker. After all, the world's tallest dog started life as the runt of the litter. And the Kelly family had no idea that the mighty Finn would one day become Britain's biggest dog. But one thing is clear, giant pet owners can't bear to be parted from their beloved beasties. No matter what the costs or the dangers. So, as a new generation is born, could we be seeing the arrival of one of the world's biggest pets? Well, you can get another super-sized animal in an hour over on Five Star as Matthew Broderick goes on the hunt for Godzilla at nine.